Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 27 of MSK Unknown Case Series. This week, we have a frontal and lateral radiograph of the knee in a patient that's had a total knee arthroplasty. And the question that we have is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? Is this a case of a periprosthetic fracture, a prosthetic dislocation, periprosthetic osteolysis, or stress shielding? What's the most likely diagnosis here? If we take a look here, the answer here, of course, is uh, prosthetic dislocation. And what we have here is, remember that a total knee arthroplasty means that all three compartments of the knee have been, uh, have been fixated here, right, or have been replaced. So not only the, the medial femoral tibial compartment, the lateral femoral tibial compartment, and then also the patellofemoral compartment. But what we have here is we have the patellar button or the patellar liner that's been displaced superiorly with respect to the patella. So it should actually be coated the articular surface of the patella. So the fact that this has been displaced, this represents a case of a prosthetic dislocation, okay? Uh, also, the space here between the patella and the femoral component of the arthroplasty is not optimal or ideal, right? It's actually abutting the metal here, which is a clue that there may be something wrong here. So this is a nice case of a prosthetic dislocation. I want to also just point your attention to the fact that there's this relative lucency here along the anterior femur. And this is normal stress shielding. This is normal uh, response to the altered weight-bearing mechanics that occur when you have a total knee arthroplasty. Because what happens is, is that most of the weight-bearing occurs along the posterior aspect of the joint and the posterior aspect of the femur. And that's why you get this sclerosis that occurs here as a response to the stress shielding. And we get the relative radial lucency along the anterior uh, femoral cortex and relative sclerosis along the posterior aspect of the femoral cortex here. So this is a nice example of what a prosthetic dislocation or the patellar liner has been displaced superiorly. So a total knee arthroplasty means that all three components of the knee joint have been replaced. So the medial femoral tibial, the lateral femoral tibial, and the patellar femoral compartment have all been replaced, right? So a hemiarthroplasty or a unipolar arthroplasty means that only one compartment has been replaced. You always want to look at all three compartments carefully, right? Because you know, it may look like the femoral and the tubal component are intact, but the patellar compartment, as in this case, are not intact. And stress shielding, as I just mentioned, is a normal response to altered weight-bearing mechanics that occur. So it happens in other joints as well. So for example, if you have a total hip arthroplasty, oftentimes you'll see radiolucency along the greater and lesser trochanter. Those are just normal response to altered weight-bearing mechanics that occur with a hip arth arthroplasty. You always want to compare with prior radiographs because findings can be very subtle, especially when you have subsidence or, you know, very subtle radiolucency. Uh, these things are very important and sometimes they can be seen on serial radiographs. So always compare with a prior when you're looking at uh, post-operative films, very important. And it's important to also realize that in the knee, the tibial component is the most common to loosen. We almost never see femoral loosening or it's very rare, right? So the tibial component is by far the most common uh, area to result in loosening, but a periprosthetic fracture is most common in the patella because of the osteotomy that occurs often in the patella to put the patellar button in place. However, newer surgical techniques are getting better, and we're seeing that less commonly, but that is the, the patella is the most common place to get a periprosthetic uh, fracture. And then finally, you always want to look to see if there's any periprosthetic lucency that measures more than two millimeters, because if you have more than two millimeters of periprosthetic lucency, your differential should include one of three things, right? Aseptic loosening, infection, or something called particle disease, which is a macrophage or histiocyte induced response to the material of the arthroplasty, like the metal or the polyethylene that results in osteolysis and radiolucency around the bone, right? So those are the three things that you want to consider when you have more than two millimeter periprosthetic lucency, aseptic loosening, infection, and particle disease. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week for another super high yield case in MSK Imaging.